Super Bowl Sunday is here, and we've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. And it's time for me, Jay, to give you all my thoughts on what's going to happen. All that coming up in about 20 seconds. What's good, everybody? It's your boy Jay here with Unfair Sports, where we take a pensive approach to the sports conversation. Thank you for checking us out. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, as well as share, because sharing is caring. Super Bowl Sunday weekend, so we got to start talking about the Buccaneers taking on the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. And I'm going to give my prediction at the end of what I think the final score will be, but I want to talk about ways that teams can win and not win. Now, if you checked out the podcast earlier this week, we discussed two ways that the teams can win and two ways the teams can lose. Feel free to check that out um, within the, uh, yeah, at the top. So, and check out that podcast. You can really hear that type of, that analysis from myself and my co-host Jimmy. But, Tampa Bay's at home in Tampa playing in the Super Bowl, which is pretty awesome. It's rare, but not rare at the same time. Um, People have pointed out how, in theory, this has happened before in certain ways. Maybe teams playing in the same area, but not in the same stadium. I think think the coolness of it is that they're at Raymond James Stadium and the Buccaneers are playing in Raymond James. So they're actually getting to play where they normally play. But we have to talk through what both teams really can do to win and what I really think is going to happen. So there's a couple of things that I've done some research on and trying to get an understanding of what we're looking at. And so first and foremost, the Chiefs have only really one issue, I think, in this entire game that could really hold them back. And it's their offensive line. They're dealing with a ton of injuries on their O-line. They just lost Fisher. And so one of them left to be a doctor, that's where the Chiefs are really, really hurting. And to me, with the way the, that the Buccaneers are made, that that's where they can take advantage. With JPP, uh, Vita Vea, and Donican Sue, they really have everything you really want or need from a team to be able to cause problems and issues. And then going into that, you can even talk about Patrick Mahomes and his foot injury. You know, he has a toe issue that he's had for, what, the last couple of weeks that's kind of limited him in a way, but not really. I mean, he is Patrick Mahomes, arm still a rocket, super accurate, and he's smart. But that right there to me is where Kansas City wins or loses. And I'm not the only one that believes that. I mean, you can search it. Just about every writer that I've even seen online, as I'm looking here, have talked about the line issues with the Chiefs, and that's going to be the determining factor for the Super Bowl, in their opinion. I think there's a couple of other things, though, that we have to consider when it comes to the Super Bowl. Tampa Bay wants to play this. Look, I'm going to give you all of the, not really cliche, but all of the obvious things. Tampa Bay has to play a flawless football game. Duh. (laughs) Duh. They have to take advantages of any turnover they can give in Kansas City. Duh. And Kansas City has to play flawless, flawless football. Duh. So for the most part, those are duh statements. But there can be some things out of that you can pull. So, like, the Chiefs got to protect Mahomes. Like I said, line issues is the biggest thing. And I don't know if they're going to be able to. This Tampa Bay defense is really good. It's legit. I mean, this year they're sixth in yards allowed, eighth in points allowed, as well as first in rushing yards allowed. They're a really good defense. I think the DVOA on them is that they're third. They're either third or five. It varies based upon if you go all the way through the playoffs and in the last game of the year and have a weighted score based upon throwing out a game where nobody played, all of that stuff, so much in there. But to me, you can you can definitely you know that they're top five. They're top five defense in the NFL. And they've shown it against teams like Green Bay, the way they basically shut out 
Aaron Rodgers, who had three opportunities to score because of three turnovers by Tom Brady within a seven-pass span, Tampa Bay was able to hold them to only six points. That's damn good defense. That's good coaching. And to be honest, against this Kansas City team, Tampa Bay has got to do the exact same thing. We need the 0-2 Buccaneers to seal this victory. I don't like betting against Tom Brady because he's Tom Brady and he loves the chip on his shoulder. He loves that play that everybody's against us. And right now, everyone's against Tampa Bay. They're, they're, there's some money coming in on the Buccaneers plus three and a half because plus three and a half is a good number to go at. Plus three, I wouldn't touch. That half a point makes a difference. Everyone is against Tampa Bay. Everyone believes that Kansas City is going to roll this game just because of the weapons they have. I don't think it's a good idea to count Tampa Bay out because of that defense. I believe that defense will be prepared for that Kansas City offense. They'll be prepared for Patrick Mahomes. They know that Patrick Mahomes is kind of hobbled. He even just came out of the concussion protocols two weeks ago. They're going to be prepared to really go at him. They're going to chase him around. They're going to force him to run on that toe that he doesn't really want to run on. They're going to probably put pressure on and jam those wide receivers at the line. They're going to force the middle to be not used. They're going to force Travis Kelsey out of the middle. There's so many things I think that this defense is going to be prepared to do. So I can't just count them out like I would like to because it's Patrick Mahomes, man. I was listening to Bo and uh, Dominique Foxworth talk about this, and I did not know this, that down two scores, Kansas City has a – Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City has a 80% win percentage. 80. 80. There should be laws against guys that good. That's not fair for a guy to be able to figure out being down two scores and win 80% of the time. And it seems like this season, Kansas City really hasn't opened up the playbook because all these games were so close. I mean, they've only covered on one spread in what, like 10 games since they've struggled on covering on the spread. Every game's been close. So how do you make sure that you're doing enough to make sure that Kansas City doesn't just come back and just blow you out. And we talk about this. Me and Jimmy talk about this a lot, how go, how they're the Golden State Warriors of the NFL when Golden State was at its peak. Golden State would be down 20 points in the second quarter, and you're like, man, there's no way they're going to come back. And every third quarter is when Golden State went off. Third quarter was it. Clay Thompson's big 40 point, 30, 40 point quarter and game, 60 point games. All of that stuff comes starting through the third quarter. That's when Golden State was known for dominating. They come out of time, uh, of halftime and they just go, they just go bananas. Kansas City has that same ability. We saw it. Markel Hartman, he dropped the he muffed the punt and the Bills scored on it. I mean, it's nine to nothing. Everybody's like, the enemy's looking at him like, hey, man, get over it. Move forward. Then the dude catches the touchdown, and boom, the floodgates open, and Kansas City doesn't look back. They go up 21 to nine. Like, who does that? The other thing that's underappreciated about Kansas City is their defense. You have to have a defense good enough to stop other opposing offenses so your offense can get on the field. I say this all the time. You have to help. Offenses have to help their defenses. And defenses have to help their offenses. Meaning offenses have to do enough to give time for the defense to get off the field. And the defense has to do enough to get the other team's offense off the field faster so that their offense can go back out there and wear out the opposing team's defense. So you got to help each other out. And Kansas City's defense has been doing it this year. They have helped out this offense so well to the fact of they're able to come back two scores down quickly. Because if the defense was bad, they'd give up a score, Kansas City would score. Then they would give up a score, and Kansas City would score. That, that would be your cycle, but they're not doing that. They're actually doing 
everything you want your defense to do. They're getting the opposing offenses off the field fast enough so that their offense can come out there and just blow them out. And it's exhausting chasing fast, swift guys like Tyree Kill or tackling big guys like Kelsey and chasing down dudes like Hardman. It's exhausting. And so if Tampa Bay wants to beat them, they got to be prepared for all of that. Now, it looks like um, Anton Winfield Jr. is going to play. Antonio Brown's going to play. Levante David looks like he's good. Defensively, Tampa Bay looks like they're as stout as they need to be. And so we're going to need the 0-2 Buccaneers defense, which was the top defense in the NFL, an historic defense. We need them to be there. Now, it would be awesome if we can get a Dexter Jackson impersonation and get two interceptions returned for a touchdown like they did against the Raiders. I don't see that happening. But if Whitfield can go out there and do something like that and get some picks on Mahomes, force some bad passes, make Mahomes think one thing's open and it's not, and then go out there and, and take those balls away, Tampa Bay's good. So my prediction for this game, as I go along winded through all of this, I'm going to call, I hate to say it, I'm rocking the shirt. You know what? I'm going to be a homer. Forget it. We're going to be a homer. Tampa Bay wins the Super Bowl 35-31. Tom Brady hosts up the Lombardi again for the 10th, for the, what was this, the 7th time in 10 tries. And he shows us that he did not need Belichick, except for in a way he did. 